is Alex. Who's this? Alex? Yeah. Hi, Alex. My name is Sharon. I'm calling for I'm calling on to the show. Okay, well I don't know where Bob is, our host. And oh. we probably shouldn't say much because we have no idea if we're on the air or not. <laughs> How, How are you, where you doing? Located? Where are you located? I'm in New Jersey. New Jersey. Joy. Yeah. Listen, I'm going to send you, I was just thinking about you today, I'm going to send you a couple pieces of silver. Oh, well, thank you so much. Hold on. Uh, Bob is calling on the other call. Hold on. Okay. Hello? Okay, so is there something you want me to tell everybody? <laughs> Um, okay, well, I'll, I'll let her know, and then you can maybe reboot it. Okay, I'll, I'll let everybody know. <laughs> okay, all right, bye-bye. I, I got you, I got you, I'll let everybody know. Well, believe it or not, our host is locked out. He is. He needs all of us to get off the phone so he can reboot the system and uh, try to get us all on, at least Alex. himself. Alex. There you go. There you go. Hey. Can you hear me? Can you yes, hear me? Yes, we can hear you. Really? Yeah, there you are. Oh, this is weird. All right. <laughs> God. Um, I don't understand. I really don't understand how this is working now because I can't even – there, I can hear myself. Wow. All right. Sorry, folks. What a goofy way to start the show. As I said, uh, welcome to the Unicus Radio Hour. I am your host and your goofy engineer, Robert Stanley. Um, apologize for the technical difficulties. Obviously, it was something I was doing or not doing here. Um, our special guest tonight is Alex Collier, Collier, as most of you already know that. Um, what the heck? Looks like somebody's trying to Skype in here, too. That's crazy. Um, okay. Where were we? Alex, you can hear me, though, right? Yes, I can, Bob. Okay, okay. I'm putting everybody else on hold. Sorry, folks. Uh, I know there was somebody you were speaking to in New Jersey uh, while I was trying to figure out how to get back on the air here. Right. So um, how do I start this? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I, that it didn't happen? <laughs> yeah, I could pl pu publicly flog myself for not figuring this out sooner. I, I, You know, I tested everything earlier, and it sounded perfect, and then for some reason it just wouldn't go. Really weird. Well, well it must be the uh, the agency's hack, you know. No, I don't think so, because I, all I had to do was take one plug out, put another plug in, and it seems to be obviously we're having a conversation. Okay. Anyway, the, one of the main reasons we wanted to have you back on this evening was to let everybody know how you're doing. And uh, if you could please give us an update on your situation. Um, my situation is we are good until the end of January. Okay. Uh, or the end of January after that, I don't know what's going to happen, but that's kind of where we're at at the moment I'm at. Mm -hmm. And um, I'm doing everything I can to release um, – at least one of the books that I have available, and uh, a website has been created to, um, if anybody's interested in getting it, it's 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 a, a a fiction novel that I wrote for young adults, and it's essentially I've taken the information that I've been given, and I've put it into a novel form, and the purpose of this is to just was to take some of the pressure off that I was getting um, from from agencies, so uh, and uh, religious radical groups. So, um, if anyone is interested, the website, in order to uh, basically sign up and get that information, is www. zen z e n mountain m o u n t a i n publishing dot com and uh it's pretty simple you just you know name email address and uh when it's ready to go we will um send you folks some information about it 
it won't be too far off because um, I have to do something. So. Uh, and the name of the book again, anyway, Ralph? Uh, the, the name of the book is The Adventures of Captain Dinar. Right. And uh, uh, this is book one. It's a trilogy. And I will also just tell everybody I am rewriting Defending Sacred Ground. And uh, I am going to be including ET-22, which is the information that I was giving regarding the genetics of Earth. Wow. And uh, the races specific to it, um, you know, that have really contributed to our gene pool. Right. And uh, so that's going to be a little bit further out, um, but it is coming. I'm doing the best that I can, um, you know, literally starting from scratch. So, uh, but that's kind of where it's at. Um, could still use some help if it's <laughs> available, if, if it's possible. If if it isn't, thank you so much for what you have done. Um, that in itself has been a miracle, and I can't tell you how much I appreciate everyone. And a special thanks to Kay out in um, Santa Fe, New Mexico. So um, what do you want to talk about? Okay. Well, okay, when you say help, you mean financially, if anybody is in a position to help you over the hump that you're still experiencing. Uh, that's what we're talking about here. And um, the information, if people, uh, let's say, okay, you can go to the blog at unicusmagazine.com. There's information there on how you can contribute to the Alex Collier Aid Project um, through PayPal or through a P.O. box in Colorado. Um, or could we, do you have that address, Alex, so we could give it out it's, over to you? Um, the, the PayPal is Ivanho, I-V-A-N-H-O-E-1818 at live.com. Okay. Um, or my, my P.O. box um, is P.O. box 795 Morrison, M O R R I S O N, Colorado, 80465. All right. Okay. And, and uh, I'm in the process of, of responding to those who have given. It's just, it's taken a little while, and, um, you know, um, sometimes the internet is very restricted to me. So, uh, sure. But I'm doing the best I can. All right. I understand. Anyway, I'm sure. People appreciate knowing that you're okay for now, uh, but I, I know there's a lot of people that are very generous around the world and uh, sending you a little bit of assistance financially and also thoughts and prayers um, and other offers that have been coming in is really wonderful, and I hope that p people would continue to do that. Um, That's amazing. It's blown my mind. I yeah, no idea. me too, because I'm in, kind of in the middle of it. A lot of people are sending me email on your behalf because they couldn't get to hold of you directly. So, um, uh, okay. Zen Mountain Publishing is what you said. Somebody's asking. ZenMountainPublishing.com? Yes. .com. yes. Okay. It's it's just one page right now. But, yes, um, that's all it is. Uh, it literally went up sometime last night. Okay. Um, and it's a friend of ours in um, Australia who's doing it and brought us to help us out. Right. To help so, me out. And, uh, so yeah, I mean it's it's you know baby steps. Yeah, I don't so, know what else to say. Well, I want to help people understand. This is January fifth. We're speaking on Thursday, January fifth, two thousand and twelve. So if you happen to listen to this show, like a lot of people do, uh, after the fact is an archive, an MP3. Um, you know the website will have changed. Things are evolving constantly. But um, you know we just want to put this out there. Alex is has written this new book, and it will be out soon. And, of course, as he said, Defending Sacred Ground, the revised version, will be out also. Um, and uh, ZenMountainPublishing.com is, is the place where you can go to find out any updates on these books by Alex Collier. Uh, I feel obligated to – I know it's not a great way to start a show, but I feel obligated to say um, – once again, sorry for the technical difficulties. Thank you for <laughs> sticking with me and not bailing out. Um, there's a lot of people that want to speak to you, and I would just like to say um, publicly how grateful I am to this audience for helping you get through the, the toughest time I think that you've had ever since I've known you. This, is, this has been really scary, actually. I was very concerned about you. And, of course, I still care about you um, and your well-being and your family. Um, but I do feel like I'm very optimistic, Alex. Uh, I know we talked about this before off the air, but I'm feeling yeah. – I, th I think we have reasons to be optimistic. So um, 
I'm kind of curious what some of the people on hold here have to say, and that might actually help. I mean, there's some things I really want to cover with you tonight, but um, I'm very curious. So I'm going to just kind of run through the board here a little bit and see what happens if it works. Okay. If it really works, okay. Area code 732, can you hear me? Hi, I'm here. Okay. Were you speaking to Alex earlier? Yes, I was. I'm Sharon from New Jersey. Okay, Sharon. Hello. Yes. Hi, Alex. <laughs> hey, Hi, Sharon. Hi. Um, I'm glad you're doing better, Alex. Um, and I know all your fans uh, care about you, and um, we'll be doing whatever we can to help you out. Um, Thank you so much. You're welcome. Um, I have a question for you. Um, do you know anything? Can you shed any light on the so-called three days of darkness that are going to be happening in 2000 or 2012? Well, as, as far as dates, let me just let me just say this, Sharon. As, as far as dates, everything at this point is event-based. It is nearly impossible to to nail anything down to a specific date unless it's a man-made creation. Um, simply because it, you're dealing with multiple dimensions at this point, and in, in, a, in, a, in a, an amazingly quickly evolving um, consciousness of the planet Earth, the people and the beings on planet Earth. So let me just say that my understanding about the three days of darkness, it, there's two possible scenarios, not just one. Um, one is is that a planetary body passes between us and the sun, and it and it basically takes three days to pass. That of wow. course would be Nibiru, um, and its dwarf star. The other is that just before we experience a pole shift, physical pole shift, the planet Earth herself will stop rotating on her axis. Now that three days of darkness would only be on one side of the planet. Oh my! But it would be three days, seventy-two hours. Those are the two scenarios. Is it a guarantee that they're going to happen? No, it is not a guarantee. There could be greater intervention than there already is now going on. And later, Bob, I want to talk to you about something. Okay. So remind me about that. Okay. Okay. Um, so I wouldn't. I wouldn't stress it. But per, to be perfectly honest with you, I wouldn't worry about it. I wouldn't stress about it. What I would do is just focus on getting yourself centered, focus on finding your spiritual base, getting really grounded because a lot of change is coming. And it's going to look ugly for a while, but in the end, it's going to be positive because we have to shift the consciousness of the planet. It's, it's basically been hijacked. And we have to take it back. And there's no way we're not going to have to take it back. We have to take it back. So right. I, I would worry about that, the three days. As far as the, the planet and the dwarf star coming through our solar system, this happens. Um, will the destruction be devastating? I don't believe it will. There has been plenty of discussions since the early 90s that I was aware of from the Andromedan Council regarding intervention. I don't believe it's going to be cataclysmic. However, there are going to be some really serious earth changes simply because the earth has to go through it. Um, she just has to go through it. She has to make some changes herself. And to, to intervene and keep the earth from going through those changes would only make things worse for her. However, there's a great deal of talk about minimizing all these dramatic earth changes and making them happen very slowly, okay, managed very slowly so that people can react to it. For example, peoples on coastlines around the world would be able to move inland. They would have some time, some warning to move inland um, in, in a perfect scenario. Uh, However, there are some things that I was that was shared with me very, very recently. Um, well, I'm, I'm not sure how that's going to play itself out. So, hmm. but, but that's all I know about the three days of darkness. 
Okay. I don't know for sure that it's going to happen, Sharon. I just don't. Okay. Thank you, Alex. Okay. Thank you. Awesome, yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. I now I'm really uh, feeling like an, a boob. I obviously didn't push the right button to get myself completely on the board. Um, I don't know if you noticed, but my signal is like ten times stronger now. Um, God, I love technology, but sometimes it drives me mad. Anyway, I uh, hope everybody's hearing me better now because I can certainly hear myself finally. Um, gosh darn it, these people are all lining up here. Um, let's see if we can get a Skype call in. Hello, Skype. Are you there? Hello. Chuck, is that you? Can I are you coming in? Hello? Chuck. Hello, Chuck. <laughs> All right. I can see you're on the board somehow. Um oh let's see. Let's try this. Oh man. I'm just really battling along here. Okay. Now I think it's working. Go ahead, now you're on hold. Uh, Chuck, I can't help you with this. For some reason, it's not working. Um, geez, I, I am going to get through this. I promise. It's really stupid. Let's try this one. Area code 978, you're on the air. Hello. Hello. Is this Don? Yes, it is. Hi, Don. Do you have a question or comment for Alex? Uh, yes. Well, I'm... Glad to know that my end is working good. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody is, yeah. yeah. Yeah, I've got a question for Alex. Go ahead. Uh, Alex, I'm a human being, a uh, chairman of the uh, Poconoke tribe, and one of the things that I'd like to ask you is uh, I believe, along with the people that are with me in this gift that we have, that there's going to be a gift of the Philosopher's Stone. And when I say the Philosopher's Stone, I mean that transmute of physical things by means of human consciousness is about to be uh, brought back again in the human realm. Well, if this does happen, will the material fixation on gold, silver, diamonds, and all this foolishness that people are, uh, give their lives for, and even food, will all of that be diminished greatly and the only thing left will be a spiritual expansion well, my understanding, Don, is that's exactly the direction it needs to go. Um, we we essentially have gotten trapped in, in in creating physicality outside of ourselves. Once we mm -hmm. get back to creating it on the inside and truly understanding and having that aha moment, that epiphany that we, in fact, can do it and see the results of it, it will not only shift our focus from outside back to the inside, to the, to the inner net of ourselves, as, as it's been put. Um, but it's also going to dramatically change the way we live and the way we live with each other and recognize each other. And I think that in itself would be the single most important thing is in how we acknowledge and uh, acknowledge each other. Um, right now, because we're so focused on the outside, we all see humanity as, as individuals living apart from each other when, in fact, nothing could be further from the truth. Um, so my understanding is, yes, as far as the material objects like gold, and uh, you brought that up specifically, the only reason that is important to us was because of the earlier extraterrestrial groups that were coming here, mining it for use on their own home planet. Uh, that is really the only reason we even consider it, uh, you know, uh, as something above and beyond um, all else as far as work. Mm. Uh, Does that uh, mean Anunnaki, in the next... I'm sorry, go ahead. Oh. Does that mean in the next uh, very short few years then human beings will be on a uh, level playing field with those that have been uh, playing with us but rather we will be become as one. We'll rec recognize that we are having a uh, being contained with uh, what Chang referred to as coalescent light, and that this light 
will be energy. And as energy, we will all come to understand that we are not only one, but we can never be destroyed. And those that would attempt to do such a thing are, are foolishly only transforming the energy that we would be in, but are actually not causing any harm to any human being. And this would be not only realized, but experienced, and that humans would take their rightful place as being brothers to all other life forms, no matter what realm or dimension that they come from. And I'm speaking of this as a shaman of the uh, Poconoke tribe because there are others of us that do have this very same thought, and we've wondered if outsiders have often uh, considered this, that humans sure. are uh, very sacred, as all life is. Hmm. Um, Thank, it, well, thanks, exactly. Tom. It, it, you know, any physicality that holds soul that consciously creates reality is, in fact, sacred. And you brought up a very interesting point about um, a level playing field. Um, I don't have a, a, a date. I'm guessing, if I had to guess, just based on my own intuition of, of what I have been told and the way I think I see things moving, I would say probably any time between 2013 and 2017 that would, in fact, occur. But, you know, it's interesting when you talk about those who've been playing with us, um, you know, looking at the scenario now, because of their enormous greed and ego and um, will to dominate and control, they are literally forcing us at this point to break free and move towards our future and to grasp it, to, to create something completely out of the box, which is exactly where we should have been going all along. So I, I'm sure that's not their intention at all, um, but, but that's, in fact, where we are going. And like I said earlier to Sharon from New Jersey, at this point, everything is event-based. There's no clock. It's just um, every action has a reaction, and that's really where we're at at this point. And some events are happening quicker, and some are, are moving slower, but they're, they're moving into different places. It's hard to say because... Um, you know, humanity is having to re basically reclaim its power, right? Um, and and its common sense from <laughs> this group that decided to um, use us to power its vision of our future. Hmm. Which is really so, is their future. I mean, they're not really giving us. Oh a, yeah. Oh, we're we're just we're just a natural resource to manifest that for them. Right. Uh -huh. right. Yeah. Right. Yeah, they're using us to do it. <laughs> well, yeah. You know, and if that don't piss you off, nothing will. Yeah. All right. Let's let's try another one here. Area code seven two zero. Can you hear me? Seven two zero. Can you hear me? All right. Put them back on hold. If you're listening, folks, I may call on you. Area code three five two. Can you hear me? I I love technology so much. Uh, there you go. So well. <laughs> yeah, I'm I'm just it's really. Mm. Let's see. They're not. They're not. It's. I guess a lot of people just figure I'm not going to go to them. They're just listening. Hello, is this Jeremy? Jeremy, can you hear me? Hello. Hello, Jeremy. How are you? I am very well. Ah, <laughs> amazing. <laughs> I just hit the one button about a minute ago. So good evening, and good evening, Alex. It's uh, a, a real honor to be speaking with you. Well, thank you, Jeremy. It's an honor to be uh, addressing you as well. Um, I've, uh, I was uh, just listening to your um, – it was a, a replay of – now what it was, the, the one about the moon, uh, the video that's uh, – that it's like a, almost a black and white one um, that uh, you did several years ago. And uh, it was very interesting, all about the moon and everything like that. Um, and uh, I have really, I mean, I'm normally absolutely chock full of questions because I, I run a radio show and uh, I'd, love to, I'd love to have you on my show, of course. Uh, we're on uh, Wall Spirit Radio. Um, but uh, uh, obviously you're, you're, uh, you're uh, not really wanting to do too much um, radio work. But uh, I'm just trying to think of a question for, <laughs> that I can ask on behalf of, of my co-hosts uh, and everybody. And 
I have to say that uh, amongst our little group, you are absolutely universally loved and respected. So, um, oh, thank you, thank you very oh. much, Jeremy. Oh. Where are you? What, what part uh, of the world are you in? I'm actually in Scotland. Um, uh, my, oh. I have a London act. I come from London. Um, mm -hmm. I'm a late bird, <laughs> so right. you know I'm I'm up all night uh, running shows for uh, for the station and. Um, and uh, we, we just started. We started about uh, May time, and uh, we got some uh, some good good hosts. Uh, I think you you may you may know Rebecca Jernigan, Alex. Yes, I do know of her, and, and um, I shared a multiple telecast uh, radio thing with her um, as so well. So you did so, with uh, Kerry and everybody, yeah. That's correct. Yes. So, Jeremy, um, would you would you send your information to me at Ivanhoe? One eight one eight at live dot com. Um, I will just take that number down. Ivanhoe one eight one eight at live dot com. Live dot com. Right. Yep. Okay. Uh, oh, excuse me. <laughs> <laughs> this, 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 is actually, this is actually quite splendid. My part of my family tree on my mother's side is from Scotland. In fact. Um, Sir Walter Scott, the writer of Ivanhoe, is one of my great grandfathers. Ah. His daughter Patricia came to the United States to live with her, his brother in Philadelphia, at the time of the Revolutionary War, and that's part of where my mother's family tree comes from. All oh, right, I'm uh, I'm up right in the north, near a place called Findhorn. Have you heard of Findhorn? Of course, the garden, of course. Yes. Yes. Um, yes. Uh, I live about ten miles away from them, up on mm -hmm. the hills. Mm -hmm. Um, we, uh, we, we moved, I, I moved here about, uh, four, 14 years ago out of London. So, um, we thought we'd get away from it just before all the, all the fireworks happened. Yeah, you did well. You did well. <laughs> Jeremy, are you calling in on Skype? Yes, I am. Well, the quality is fantastic. I, and whoever, you know, there's other people that are trying to call me on Skype and that isn't going to work for me. I can only, for some reason, I don't, I'm, you know, technologically retarded i guess but i oh, cannot okay. figure out how in the world to get them through on when they're calling me directly on skype instead of to the show so um you know all uh, right what was well, what was your secret how did you do what, what did you call in on skype um there is a, a connection on the show on right. uh, once once the show has started yeah uh, I've, I've got my own show on um Bob talk radio once the oh. show has started a little blue s pops up Okay. Uh, on the uh, by the telephone number next to the player, got it. And if you click that, it stops the player and then connects you into what we're on BTR host twenty six. I line. see. Yeah. Oh, okay. Good uh, to know. I, I, you know, this is my uh, uh, live studio, uh, so um, yeah, I can my... tell the quality is very good. <laughs> <laughs> it's not a regular phone. I could see that in a minute. That's right. So um, now let's let me just see if I can uh, come up with a question that that, that would justify um, speaking with you, Alex. Um, obviously, you're um, you you, uh, you you only uh, there's there's only now what was it, is it Morinay who's left and it was Viseas who died or have I got it around the wrong way? Yes, no, Viseas crossed over. He left uh, their physicality. He, he his his particular. Um, uh, life, he basically doubled their life expectancy in one physicality. Hmm. Um, so yeah, he left, and, and Mornay is the one that's left. That is oh. correct. Interesting, this name, because I live in the county called Moray, hmm. and then oh, there's no also kidding. this ascended master who's called Moray as well, and huh. I don't know what that's all about. <laughs> but... Um, so, uh, are you are you still in contact with them? Uh, oh, yes. With, with uh, the CS. And um, how does he show up? Does he just like, you know, appear in your room, or or do you get a, <laughs> do you get a text message saying I'm I'm coming? You know, do, do, can the, well, another you know, thing is sorry, I, I, I'm you know, now starting to fill, up, fill with questions. <laughs> um, do do uh, do they have? Um, can they connect in with our internet from hyperspace or whatever? Uh, they have not. Uh, if they have, if they can, they have not. Um, I don't know that. Um, in fact, I'd be kind of suspect if they if they did. They wouldn't. They wouldn't use our technology, um, quite honestly. Uh, but no, there's telepathy. There's of course physical contact, um, and uh, that's pretty much how it goes. And the telepathy can occur at any time. 
you know, um, even in a dream state, it can occur. So right. there's all kinds of very interesting ways. You know, Earth is Earth is in a in an amazing place at the moment. There is so much going on out there between uh, between Venus and and Mars. Uh, you know, I just wish I just wish I could do the valley parking. <laughs> <laughs> I really do. Um, you know, the tents alone would be awesome. Uh, not to mention, you know, what you'd have the opportunity to fly and park. Yeah. So there's a, an awful lot going on out there. And, and it, it's a really, it, it's going to be an amazing time. Um, you know, for every negative thing that happens, there'll be three or four amazingly positive things that are going to occur. Mm-hmm. You counterbalance it to basically make up for all the time that we've lost. And, you know, everything's being sped up. And it's just, it's, it's an absolute amazing gift that these races um, that belong to multiple councils, the Andromedan Council, uh, the Plajaran Council, the Pleiadian Council, other councils uh, that are out there, other groups, that they have decided to lend resources to our little tiny solar system, you know, to help us make this transition. And, and you know, a, a lot of people don't understand that, so I'm just going to say it, Jeremy. You know, the movement through dimensions, the movement of, of changing physical form is always managed. They never leave it to chance. You know, you just don't pop in and there you are. There is a progression, and it takes the participation of those dimensions, fourth and fifth, the mentors, that's how they're known. They're known as the mentoring groups that step in and they guide the process and the planetary race or planets through this process so that when we get there, we are not only fully established, but completely self-responsible. And Mm. that's the key phrase, completely self-responsible. So this is all being managed. It's just they haven't really shown themselves yet to everyone. Um, right. But it's coming. It's coming because people's consciousnesses are changing and people are beginning to realize that we can't solve the problems of the world with the same thinking that created them. Not so really. we're, having to stretch, we're having to stretch out of our box. And um, it's going to be amazing. It's going to be amazing. So, um, and so I'm in that sort case, of looking forward to it. So it's going to be amazing. So when is – when I say when – I know you, I listened to your earlier question and you said it's event based. So, what are the signs that, uh, that as Cliff High calls them, temporal markers, that, that we say now things are going to kick in? How do we know? Well, they're already kicking in. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> they're already kicking in. I mean, uh, the powers that be are doing everything they can to distract us and put us into fear and create a third world war and destroy the global economies of the planet. They're doing everything they can to get our attention and our focus. Mm. And they're having some trouble because people are done with that. We're all fed up with the bullshit. Excuse me. Can I say that on there? You just did. They're, they're, okay. They're, they're really fed up with it. And, you know, they're, they're here in the United States, and I know over in Europe, people are, are in, in even parts of Asia, they're taking their power back, and they're like, enough is enough. You yeah, know, when, yeah. is it, when did we become the enemy when we're, the people are the ones who created the governments, and now the governments have decided and declared that they now own the people? Right. Uh-uh-uh. That isn't going to fly, and that never has flown. Mm-mm. So, um, so you know, it's already begun. What's interesting is that we're sort of in a little bit of a lag time here, but to answer your question, I don't know when the absolute pivotal moment will be. If I ever do find out what that event is going to be, I will come back on the, on the radio and let Bob know um, or, you know, address you directly so that you can talk about it. I will let you know. But at this particular moment, I don't exactly know what that pivotal moment is. But, you know, in truth, they're all pivotal moments, even if they're yep. little, yep. you know. Um, they're all building an energy, a focus. It's like climbing the stairs, and that's exactly what's happening. We're climbing yeah. those stairs. Jeremy? Yes. 
Could you do me a favor and uh, please contact me through my email at editor at unicusmagazine.com? All right. <laughs> this is live, folks, in case you didn't notice. So this is live typing. Yeah, it's cool. So I, I'd like to... I, you're, you sound like a very interesting person. I'd like to network with your group over there in Scotland, and because uh, I also have some family ties there as well. So uh, cool. I'm going to put you on hold now. Please listen to the show. We may be. I, I'm certainly looking forward to be in touch with you again. Oh, bless you. Um, actually, to the um, the radio is uh, is not uh, Scottish based. It's actually um, uh, I don't know oh, if you've heard Dave, Dave Corso and Rebecca Jernigan. We're all on on the same Welcome. station, and it's mostly oh, okay. run from. Uh, well, I, I do a lot of the broadcast from here, but uh, most sure. of the hosts are over in America. So, uh, well, either way, I'd like to I'd like to network with you guys. It sounds sure. like you're on the right path. So, thank oh, you for yeah. calling in, Jeremy. God bless you, Alex. God bless you, Robert. Thank and you, sir. keep up thank the you. great work. I, we love you. Take care, Jeremy. Thank you. Good night. Right. Okay. Cool. Yeah, we've <laughs> we've got a great audience here. I just I apologize again for not being such a great engineer. Uh, and the calls are just backing up, so let's, let's just keep going and see what happens. Um, area code area code 619, can you hear me? Yes, this is Leona. Hi, Leona. How Hi. are you? Hey, pretty good. What an honor to talk to you, Alex. Uh, thank you so much. Um, I, I have two questions. On the last show, you said there was an eight-month window, and you sort of just answered it, but if you knew a, a timeline of that eight-month window. And then the other question is, what is your take on chemtrails? Gosh, you know, so many folks have, have asked me about chemtrails, and, you know, I, I have not actually had the time because of my situation and my limited resources to actually do a great deal of, of study on chemtrails. Um, I, you know, I'm leaning, I will just say this, and it's, it's a semi-educated, uneducated guess, my thought was that maybe they were doing something, putting these chemicals in the air to try to block some of the radiation because they know that the Earth's magnetic field is weakening. Um, but that's just a guess. I know there's a lot of other opinions out there. Um, but at this particular point, I could not give you a fully educated guess. Um, what I've given you is just basically my opinion based on the little that I do know about it. Okay. Okay, I've, I've not had a chance to, to ask the A's about it. But the eight-month window that you had mentioned? It's still open. On the last show. It's still it's open. Still open. Okay, great. Oh, yeah. Now look for an email from Love and Light. I, I sent it to uh, Robert, and, okay. and uh, so you, you know, but I, I have a place where you can stay for free. But uh, anyhow, thank you so much, and I'll continue oh, listening you, to someone else at the time. Thank you so much. Thank you. Okay. Bye-bye. Take care. Wow. That's sweet. That's <laughs> this, awesome. I know. You have so many neat people. Um, okay, before I forget, one of the emails I got for you was somebody was asking, um, how, do you, how would one have, uh, initiate physical contact or other contact um, with the good extraterrestrials, in your opinion? How would, how could someone do that? Oh, that's such a great question, and I've been asked that many, many times over mm -hmm. the years. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, the only response I have to that is, is be really clear that you want it. Mm -hmm. um, be really centered about it, okay? Mm -hmm. and then create the space. Uh, that's really, <laughs> really important is about creating the space for it to occur. Right. Um, and there's many ways to do that, either through meditation, uh, spending time alone uh, in an area where you are, in fact, alone. Um, or, you know, it all depends if you want physical or you want telepathic. I would suggest telepathic right off the bat. Mm -hmm. That you could ask a lot of questions and test the source yourself to make sure that it has only your highest good in mind. Right. You know, um, that's what I would suggest because there's, you know, there's so much going on here. And, you know, unfortunately, we have quite a bit of rogue groups here, mm -hmm. including 
you know, the archons that you talk about mm -hmm. uh, who are fully capable of, of talking uh, for themselves. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So um, that's how I would suggest you do it. And imagine, visualize what it would look like to have those conversations, those events mm -hmm. occur. And right. uh, create a list of questions specifically about yourself, um, you know, so that, you know, you can test it. Right. So, yep. Yeah. I mentioned yep. to you that the first show, I mentioned to you how it happened to me, um, although I've had multiple contact uh, scenarios, there was, uh, you know, shockingly enough, when I had sent a me message out there mentally uh, to the Orion belt of home, is what I was looking at at the moment. I wasn't really wanting to speak with them directly, but I was putting it out there like, you know, are you are you kidding? You expect me to expose Washington, D.C. to the world? I mean, by myself? Come on, can't you give me some help? You guys are more advanced than me. I mean, and, uh, you know, the next morning this ship showed up and actually allowed me to take the pictures um, that I have up on my website at Um It's just... <laughs> I would say this to, to whoever whoever really wants to have contact, be prepared. It's not Alex is right. You should know what kind of contact you want to have with whom I should say you want to have contact. But try and prepare yourself emotionally because it's shocking. As many times as it's happened to me, I'm still there's been multiple times. In fact, one time I came off of your uh, driving away from your place in Malibu that when we first met up there in the 80s. I came away from there um, one night riding the motorcycle and it was um, it was really dark, but I had this just really intense tingling on the back of my neck. And I just knew somebody was up there watching me or following me. And so uh, at one point I looked up to this area on the mountain as I was riding the bike. And um, I said to him mentally, I go, you know, I know you're up there watching me. Why don't you just show yourselves? I mean, I'm not going to hurt you. And immediately the light on the craft went on and I almost fell off my motorcycle because I couldn't <laughs> concentrate. And I, 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 and, and after a few seconds, they turned the light back off because I wasn't watching the road anymore. I just was looking up at them, which was very dangerous, you know, riding like 50 miles an hour down a dirt, I mean, a, a mountain road at night. But I, so, and afterwards I remember trying to call you. I just, I had just left your house maybe, I don't know, 15 minutes earlier. And I, I got to a public phone and I'm trying to call you going, Alex, Alex, they're, they're following me. You know, it was like, man, it was, it's exciting, but it's also can be, it can be very unnerving actually. So like, I'm yeah, trying we should, to warn we should do, we should do a show on the Malibu years. You, <laughs> you know, I did get some email about that. People enjoyed hearing our little anecdotal uh, adventures up in the, the ruins there. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Place. Let's see. Okay. Yeah. Very magical. Back to work. <laughs> yeah. Right. Area code 480. Are you there? Yes. Um, Great. So it, it is so much an honor to be able to talk to you, Alex and Rob. Thank you so sure. much for uh, hosting the show. Just well, listening, uh, um, the friendship between you two just make my day. Thank you so much. <laughs> oh, it's great. Uh, my question is, uh, 2009 back in, I think Alex did a, a conference in Hawaii, mm -hmm. and uh, he mentioned something about the uh, in that year or the next year, October, uh, sorry, that to bring back the subject to the regional issues, the Japanese government, something to do with contacting Japanese government. Hmm. And also that maybe 10 years back from that time, he mentioned of something that the uh, Illuminati had actually planned to sink uh, one of the islands in Japan. Oh, right. And uh, right. Uh, if you could comment on that, please. Okay. Um, as far as... If, has there been contact with Japan? Um, I don't actually know at this particular point, though I know there have been more and more sightings over Japan than there ever has been. Mm. And I don't know if there's actually been some contact. So let's go back to uh, Japan sinking. Um, yes, I was in fact told that it would. Uh, I am absolutely glad it hasn't. But let me just share with you something new that was given to me or shared with me um, and uh, other, this is the first time I'm publicly actually ever talking about it. Um, as, as you, many of you are probably aware or do suspect, there has been a considerable amount of intervention in helping the Earth um, minimize dramatic Earth changes. Um, as you know, many people have said they were going to be happening a lot sooner. 
and many dramatic things haven't yet, thank God. Mm. Now, this brings us to what's happening in the Pacific. They, the, the, the Earth's core, uh, core and the equator are, in fact, expanding. And what's happened is benevolent groups have been slowing that expansion down to minimize dramatic change, to basically buy us some time. However, what's happened now is that because of their intervention, more and more volcanoes are going off because the Earth is not being allowed to expand as fast as she wants to. Hmm. So what's happening now is they're having to make some choices. And the biggest concern right now is the Pacific Plate. Um, it is cracking virtually right down the middle. Whoa. And if, and if it cracks, what you're going to have is Indonesia and the Philippines will start moving towards the Indian Ocean. And to the north of the crack, the northern piece of the Pacific Plate is going to rise up and literally form a chain of islands across the Pacific. This, however, would, of course, cause an absolute catastrophe for huh. every, anyone on the Pacific right. coastlines, anywhere. Um, they're going to have to make some decisions. And I was told, to, I was given this information two nights ago. And that's kind of where it's at. I don't know what's going to happen at this moment. I don't want this to happen. Um, you know, I remember what Edgar Casey had said about Mount Pele. You know, uh, you know, I obviously don't want this to happen. Um, but the Earth is going to change herself, um, and part of that geological change is also changing her her own harmonic to adapt to the higher frequencies that she's getting or is becoming part of her, just like we would. You know how we adapt to a specific situation? Uh, whether I mean, we're fantastic at this, the human race, at adapting to different situations. Mm. Well, the Earth is, is, is exactly the same way. It's just, you know, most people are going to be caught totally blind by the changes. So I think something's eminent. I do. I think something regarding the Pacific is eminent, and I truly pray for the people of Japan. I, I do not want this to happen, um, or the West Coast, or Mexico, or anywhere in South America, or you know Indonesia, the Philippines. I I don't know, um, but that's don't, new information. Don't so forget that's Chile. All you I know. Remember, Chile had a nine point something or other prior to the Japanese so a quake. So. Clearly, as you say, that plate is moving dramatically. It is. It's, it's being risen up. It's being mm -hmm. pushed up. And what they're doing is they're trying to hold it down and to divert the energy in other places. Mm -hmm. But there's just too much now. You know, yeah. what they've been doing is now creating other problems. And he was just letting me know that there's going to be a change in the approach to that. Mm -hmm. And there could be some real dramatic movement. Um, hmm. You know, again, they're trying to manage the situation to help us. Right. And it's and it's not easy. You know, it's not easy. I mean, wow. uh, you know, planetology is is <laughs> you know is 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 an amazing thing. So, yes. And and you know, and I'll tell you this: the the the, uh, the planetary races that are involved in this mm -hmm. are all experienced in terraforming. Right. So they have their best of the best here to try to help. Sure. Right, right. I know. And, and that's, so, and that's, and that's, that's what I know before I know. That's, yeah, thank you for that question. You know, and that's that's the ironic dichotomy that we're in the midst of. We On one side, you've got these really evildoers, and then the other side are these, like, almost angelic beings that are here to help us any way they can, you know, and we're stuck in the middle of it. I mean, it's it's a very – very dynamic and a very interesting place to live, especially at this time. Let's see if I can get a oh, Skype yeah. call. Skype caller, can you hear me? 
Hello, I hear you typing. Okay. Is it good? I'm going to remind people again, you never know when I'm going to go to you because I, I really don't. <laughs> I don't have a whole lot of control over this sometime. I'm going to try this one, one more time. Skype caller, can you hear me? Boy, Skype is not being my friend tonight. Okay, let's try this. Area code 928, can you hear me? Hi, yes. Hello. Hi, um, I'm Muggsy. I have a radio show. I'm with JP. And I just wanted to tell Alex, thank you for breaking through that glass ceiling. Um, all of us hosts now, we've, we've got a lot of courage and kind of a direction because you broke through that. Thank you. Oh, you're welcome. You're welcome, Mom. You know, hindsight's always twenty twenty. Um, I'm still not there yet. <laughs> but thank you very much. You know, a lot of us radio. A there's a lot of radio hosts that would really like to help you, and um, if you give us the opportunity. So I'll let uh, Robert get with JP, but um, we want to help you. What you're doing is fantastic. Thank you so much, Maxie. Okay, here's my question. Okay. When I view souls, I get a color with them. They're specific colors. And I don't know if it's because of the dimension, like the residency, or is it the, like, soul where they came from? Because sometimes I'll get a blue, sometimes it's a gold, sometimes it's like an iridescent, or um, there's different colors of violet that I'll pick up on. Do you have any idea what that would indicate? Well, it's not a place. Um, what, what's been shared with me is the predominant color is a life purpose. Hmm. Okay? It is not uh, a specific dimension or but a purpose, a specific purpose that people have come in to experience. And it is along that bandwidth of frequency, of vibration, that the predominant life experiences they have will be in. And off the top of my head, I couldn't tell you what dark blue is or light blue or violet or orange or yellow, but whatever those specific um, bands are, those are the lessons or the experiences that they've chosen uh, predominantly to experience in this life. Um, because, you know, Earth is just a hologram. And we contain all those bands of colors, uh, even ones we don't even see, because of our limited vision. Mm -hmm. So that's all I know about that. Could you talk a little bit about the monetary system? Because... Um, <laughs> I, I've heard your lectures. I know what the A team thinks of money, and we all want to get away from the monetary system. Do you see that in our future? Is there a way around that? Is there some kind of advice for that? Well, you know, it is funny you should mention that. Robert and I <laughs> had that conversation earlier today. Yep. And uh, I even said to Bob, God, Bob, we ought to save some of this conversation for the radio show. Mm -hmm. Um. So here you go. Thank you so much for bringing it up. Obviously, Bob, we were meant to talk about it again. Yes, yes. Um, yes, it is going to be in our future. And, yes, uh, one of the things that we talked about that actually Bob had brought up was, you know, how do we go from step A to step B in that process? And that is part of the mentorship. Mm -hmm. That is one of the reasons why we have so many groups lining up to to work with us at that moment when it's pivotal for them to step in and introduce themselves, and we won't freak out or react like a bunch of ninnies grabbing our skirts and running for the heavens <laughs> or for the hills. Yeah. Um, that's part of it. Um, yes, it is absolutely going to be in our future. We're like the only ones who use money here. And, uh, you know, they're not going to make the exception. We need to get on the same page as the rest of the galaxy. Mm-hmm. Um, it's just it's a control mechanism from, from day one, and we're going to be shaking that off um, because that's truly level. It's just we don't know how to, to live without money um, or to be part of a system that doesn't have money 
and we have to be taught how to value things that are far more important than money uh, or just someone's individual labor every single day. There's right. a lot of ways to look at the value of not only a life, but of a person and what they do and what they bring. And we're going to need some help getting over that hump. Mm -hmm. um, but yes, it is in our future. Uh, I, would, I would venture to say that 25 years from now, we will not be having a monetary system. It could be sooner, mm -hmm. but I'm kind of giving myself a little, you know, hedge there. Um, if things continue to progress the way that they are, uh, we will be we'll be throwing away money. We will see what a, how to, how a control mechanism it really is. Mm -hmm. You know, um, and uh, you know, we we got several emails. It's interesting from the last show. And one particular gentleman was talking about he had been taken to another planet mm -hmm. where there were Navy people uh, in uniform, U.S. Navy people, and he said they were incredibly happy. And just before he had to come back, he was taken to a store, and the extraterrestrial that was with him said, you know, take what you want. And, and, the, and this young man said, well, I don't have any money. And the extraterrestrial just looked at him and said, well, we don't take money. We don't use money, so it's mm -hmm. okay. Mm -hmm. And he didn't know what to do, you know. <laughs> that's how conditioned we are, yeah. and we've become here. Um, I mean, that's a fantastic question. It is coming, uh, right. you know, and just um, imagine. Imagine how happy we would be if we didn't have to have it in order to live and survive, and we could live in comfort without it. Yes, just the think operative. About how much... Just think about how much energy, how much time, yep. stress, aggravation, bullshit we have to put up with in order to get a piece of paper with pictures on it. And numbers. what the say used to call it. Yeah. You know, paper with pictures on it. Yeah. You know, and then, of course, there's that enigmatic question that he asked me that's haunted me forever since he said it. Why do you have to pay to live on a planet you were born on? Right. I just you know, and what are you paying with anyway? I mean, who's issuing all the credit? I mean, we could spend a whole show talking about this, yeah, and it, it would just, just make believe. It's just make believe. Well, yeah, but it's yes, but it's still a control mechanism for the el elitists that want to distribute it. Cause they want to control the distribution of all goods and services on the planet. It's more than that. It's control of the population. It's control of the soul. Control of consciousness. Mm. The control of the ability of us to create physicality, they have us by the cojones because we're all chasing this paper with pictures on it. Well, speaking of that, I am going to go to a commercial break. I think that's a fairly decent segue to say I have to do a um, self-promotional right. ad for myself. Okay, so just hold on for I'll be right back in a couple minutes, Alex. All right. Okay, Alex, we're back on and um, hopefully I can find my place here because honestly... There's a lot of people calling in here. I can't, I've never had this many people on the board before. I hope it doesn't crash. Um, <laughs> well, I mean, you know, let's see. Let's see if I can do this one. Area code 517. Oh, You're on the air. Hey. Hi. Oh, hey, how's it going? Good, thanks. Uh, yeah, um, this is the first time I've called into a, a station like this, but uh, I like to – point out on something what Alex said about the uh, monetary system. Mm -hmm. um, I agree with him. I don't think we should have to pay to live in a world we, we were born on. But at the same time, I'm more concerned about the fact with the health care. Mm -hmm. Why is it that we, if we're a resource, why are we denied our health in order to continue fulfilling that role? You ever mm -hmm. wonder on that? I mean, it, it just seems like, you know, once it's like what you were that horse that's on that last leg, and next thing you know, they're sent to the glue factory, you know? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it seems like it. <laughs> you know? Yeah, I think you're absolutely right. Uh, I mean, if you're asking me to, to be able to paint you a picture of how everything on this planet makes sense, I can't do that. Yeah. Uh, I, I, I simply, I, I, I mean, just look at, you know, the world governments. In order to enrich themselves with more money, which, of course, is an illusion, they're willing to kill millions of people with wars, I don't understand. Maybe I'm just an idiot, but I don't understand why 
that makes sense, how we would even let them get away with it, and why we even tolerate it. It just makes no sense to me. Well, you know what? I'll jump in. So here. I, Alex, Alex, I, I did address this before about the archons that they feed off the negative energy. So it's not only an industry for people here in this physical dimension. It's for those who are not in the physical or in, into the higher dimension that is on the negative side. They're, my understanding is that they're actually – it's like a drug for them or a food and a drug that they need us to suffer and to, and to be hateful. So it not only why, but why would we as a population even tolerate uh, again this? again uh, this was part of no, the key. I don't, I don't, it's frustrating for me. Uh, me too. But here's the, and that was why the response was so big last time I was uh, got on coast to coast and talked about the, this particular level of archon that looks like an amoeba, a very large amoeba. It's it insinuates itself into our consciousness in a way that it's um, uh, hard to distinguish especially if you're not even aware that these things exist, then how would you know that there's a secondary voice speaking to your conscious telling you to hate, to kill? I mean, it's not just the media that's doing this. And besides, if everybody's influenced by them equally or to some degree, it would explain a lot as to the misbehavior. I mean, it's so inhuman or inhumane that you have to wonder, is it an alien influence? I've wondered this for many years. I, I addressed it in my second book, uh, Covert Encounters in Washington, D.C. I, I knew that some of the politicians and uh, other leaders have been influenced by demonic forces, but until I recently came across this information about the Archons and put out a press release, I had no idea that everybody was vulnerable to or susceptible to some sort of uh, intervention in their consciousness where basically you're hearing a voice thinking it's your own and it's not it's these entities it's these entities that, and they're very low level but they do a very good job of um, insinuating themselves into our minds and causing us to basically uh, hate and kill and hurt one another and even ourselves at times so just so that they can feed off of that negative energy that's being generated so hopefully that explains the for the caller I you know <laughs> I, I, and for you, Alex, because like I said, you know, the response I got last time I put it out there nationally was amazing. People of all ages were telling me, yes, we see these things. We know they're evil. Uh, we, you know, thank you for bringing it up. I, now I don't feel so crazy. And, um, you know, these things, are, we, know, got, we got pictures of them, you know. Sure, sure. I mean, I, I, you know, it's interesting. I hadn't thought about this in a little while, but I had this, I had I just recalled uh, a situation where I was with Mornay and Paseas, and we were mm -hmm. in, one of, in, in Mornay Scoutcraft, and we were sitting up above the United States. And uh, they were watching on their monitors the news. Mm -hmm. And I remember telling Mornay, that's not a good idea. <laughs> you know, and Paseas was looking at something, and we walked over, and he was looking at a news broadcast from Chicago. Uh -huh. And it was about a shooting where a Chicago policeman had shot a black man who had done something or was running away from something or was uh -huh. a suspect. Uh -huh. And then he desperately tried to save his life, the policeman. Right. And Viseas just didn't understand, if you wanted to save his <laughs> life, yeah. why did you try to kill him in the first place? Right. And I just simply... You know, try to explain it, but I didn't get anywhere mm -hmm. because in reality, it doesn't always make sense to me either. No, no, I, and that's and that was what I was saying about Washington D.C. How can you be an elected representative of the people and then you turn around and rule against the will of the people? Did you lose your mind, or are you possessed? You know, well, and, you, that, that, that's a fascinating thought. Here you have the people who created created the states. Mm -hmm. Then the states created the federal government. Mm -hmm. Now the federal government has overruled and declared itself sovereign from the states. And now the, the federal government claims that it owns the people. Yeah. And now it claims that the people are, in fact, the enemy. Right, right. <laughs> right, right. Extra, I know that. That makes extra, sense, doesn't it? <laughs> well, only, only if you put it in. Right, but only if you put it into the perspective of something that, that most people find uh, very difficult to, to accept is – which I, I put in the conclusion of my second book. I was not pleased with this, but I think it's accurate, and that's why I stand behind what I wrote. There are people in Washington, D.C. who are possessed by demons, clearly. And there's, I give c concrete evidence for this. 
It's not a conjecture on my part. I wish it was that simple. I would tell you straight out if this was some sort of um, uh, opinion that I was just holding, but it's not. It's it's an observation, and I, I thought it was a very good journalistic endeavor on my part, and it takes a little courage to go out there and, and actually um, take on Washington, D.C. Uh, fortunately, nothing bad has happened to me yet, and hopefully nothing will, but um, you know, my idea, my goal is to help liberate this world, and I'm, I'm sure we'll discuss that more uh, as time goes on. But I feel obligated to the, that we're running out of time, and there's whoops, and there's so many people. <laughs> the technology is not, it's just driving me nuts tonight. Um, I, I'm well, there's no question. There's no question. Washington D.C. needs an enema. There's no question. Oh. Well, it needs an exorcism, actually. And and uh, but the, 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 the <laughs> okay, that's true. The Vatican can't do it because they've been infiltrated by the same demonic forces, and, and they admitted it. Uh, and I, I've got that in, in the book as well. Uh, nothing against the church. It's just that's the way it is. Power structures here on this planet, almost every power structure I've ever encountered has been influenced by these archons to the point of corruption and cruelty. So um, some people have been on hold here a long time. I'm going to try and go to them first. Okay. Area code 940, can you hear me? Yes. Hey, Robert. Hello. Let me – I'm just going to get off the speakerphone here. Hello. Sure. Hi. Hey, how you doing? I'm doing well. How are you? Good. Happy New Year to you both. Thank you. Um, Thank you. Nice. Hi, Alex. I, I've been following you, both of your work, uh, you, you for a longer time, of course, Alex. And um, I, I just I, – I've been following the conversation tonight, and I'm, I'm changing my questions as I listen, of course. Um, I, I have a question, Alex. Um the the group that you're involved with is this the same group as Tolex group? Uh, no, no, it's not. Okay. These are fifth dimensional beings, and I believe Tolex group are fourth. Okay. They're in a completely um, different harmonic. They may may well know each other or of each other, right? But they live and exist in a completely different harmonic. I gotcha. Um, you know, I, I'm looking at the world. I'm looking at the news today, like you two are. And um, you know, with, with, with all these uh, bases being shut down and these um, frequencies being shut down, you know, I, I'm not, I'm not seeing it. You know, in the news. <laughs> you, you know what I mean? I mean, I'm not seeing it. You know, I, I see a lot of chaos. I, I, I feel the confusion in people. You know, so many people, as you as you were both talking earlier, are so externalized. Um, I think I think people really need to start reeling themselves in a little bit and quit wanting to be entertained and shut off the media, as like you yeah. said before, Robert. You know, mm. like turn off your TV sets, relax, quit texting people, mm. go within a little bit, and and know who you are. And that's why these negative forces are talking to everybody. But when you're when you're Consciousness is is focused totally outside of you. You don't even know whose voice you're listening to. Right. You know. Yeah. That's exactly right. And um, all these technological gadgets we have, if we could find our center and and learn telepathy, we could be doing all of this without any technology. Right. You know what? You know what? The, it reminds me of when um, back in the '80s when we were going up to the mountains a lot uh, in Malibu. I did yep. have a vision of prior to the internet. I had it was. I thought it looked like a giant spider web, and and it, they made it clear to me that we're all connected through this thing. I mean, and you know, in uh, the movie Avatar, they talked about it this way, but the internet uh, is sort of a corruption of what already exists. But we're just most of us are not plugged into it. Uh, this web of life of consciousness is there. It is, and it spreads out throughout the entire uh, uh, cosmos. And so we can tap into that, but it takes training, and um, it also takes an awareness that it even that this thing even exists. So, like a spider's web, the way it was shown to me was like a spider's web. Um, a spider can feel everything in its web, as long as it's in the web. We're not in the web. We've taken ourselves out, or I should say, we've been divorced from it by the by the dark side, and they've in, put us into an artificial web of their creation and in, in essence isolating us from this cosmic web of life. It's, it's just, I, again, it's not a spider's web, it, but it just lo it reminded me of when I saw it, it was really interesting because it's sort of these just filaments, these very fine filaments of light that connect everything and everyone. 
but just like the internet that we're on here right now, you can easily disconnect yourself from it, right? And therefore right. you can't and you can't communicate. Same with the radio. There's radio and television waves passing through right now, thousands of different channels. We don't we can't hear it with unless you're tapped into it. And that's just I'm just giving an analogy. I know it's not the best uh you know, maybe not the best one, but I'm <laughs> I am trying. I am trying. Uh, and again, I, I think I got to rush if we're going to get through all these calls. Area code seven two zero. Can you hear me? Seven two zero. I hear you. Are you? Can you hear me? All right. Seven two zero. One more time. You're up, and you're out of there. Okay. <laughs> I know. Going, I going, going. Yep, area code 352. Are you there? Okay, folks, if you're listening to this show, you may actually be um, missing your opportunity to speak to myself and Alex. Okay, area code 352, one more time. I put a uh, link into a video that um, Ben Fulford posted all these documents of. Okay. I mean, it was one for a World Trust document that was signed in 2005 by Fernando Marcos, Queen Elizabeth, right. Ronald Reagan, and a couple of other names on there. Could you see, uh, get a little closer to your phone? I don't remember what the trust was. It was like TVM. 666 or something? Yeah, okay. I, I'm i sorry. It's too far away from the phone. I, I really couldn't hear what she was saying, and I bet everybody else couldn't either. Okay. Um, Let's talk about that for a moment. The six, go ahead. Six, go ahead. Six. Um, if you go on YouTube and you do a search for the law, the three trusts, Mm-hmm. There is a gentleman on there. The information is remarkable. He proves that the church, the Vatican, um, created three trusts, and in these trusts, one says, one trust says it owns the planet, one trust says it owns our souls, and one trust says it owns everything inside and on the surface of the planet, wow. including us. And that's where he thinks it comes from, and he shows you the proof of the trusts, where they went, they were created, and the years they were created, and which popes created them. Hmm. It is absolutely remarkable. Please repeat. Where, uh, do, where do you get that information? It's called the law. Yeah. The dash three trusts, and I cannot think of his name at the moment because, you know, I'm here with you yeah. on, well, on the it, radio, but um, it's on YouTube. Okay. And, it, I, it, it, and when we get off here, Bob, I will send. I will, or tomorrow, I will send that information to you. Okay. And maybe you could put it up on your website. Absolutely. But it teaches a series of lectures, proving that six 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 is in fact the Vatican and these three trusts and the names of these three trusts. Each name of the trust equals six. The second one's name equals six. Uh -huh. The third one's name equals six. Wow. There's no way it's a coincidence. Sure. It's, okay. It's uh, fascinating. So maybe that will help some folks. Perhaps. Area code 707, can you hear me? Hello? 707, can you hear me? Hi, how are you? I'm doing well. How are you? I'm fine. I was just listening, but the name of the man who did that video is Frank O'Collins out of Australia. That's Australia. You got it. Thank you so much. Frank You're welcome. Yes. That's, why I, that's why I came up. Yes, he has a <laughs> whole system called Eucadia that he's been building for 22 years as an alternate of the corrupted laws that the Roman cult created. Um, and I don't, I'm not well enough versed in the history to um, to talk about it, but um, somewhere around 750 A.D., um, after 
Charles Martel, I believe, created the Catholic Church. It was taken over by these, he calls them parasites and mind parasites. So it coincides with... Yes, the archons, yes. Yes, exactly. That's right. Mm -hmm. And, And that's why the Gnostics had to be dealt with, because they knew this. Oh, absolutely. Oh, absolutely. It, and all trace of indigenous um, human spirituality has been wiped off the earth repeatedly. Mm. Mm-hmm. Mm. His ancestry comes from the Okulian um, Irish priest, Druid priest, mm-hmm. and that ties in with um, Michael Tassarian's Irish origins of civilization. So we're at a mm. time where this information is actually coming out. And um, it's really wonderful to be able to link up with each other, even though I'm on the tele- cell phone, which is because I can't get <laughs> through on the the um, blog talk. Well, thank you. And, thank you so much. I'm, I'm um, so glad you brought his name up because I... I um, his work is is fantastic, and uh, an, a friend of mine brought that to my attention not too long ago, actually. And I sat there with my mouth open, like, "Oh my God!" Mm-hmm. You know, mm-hmm. makes perfect Absolutely. sense. And you know, right. they, yeah, <laughs> uh, okay. yeah, I'm sure it'll blow a lot of the audience away. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye bye. Bye bye. God bless. Okay. Yep. All right. Let's keep uh, moving. Chuck, are you there? Yeah. Hi, Chuck. Can you hear me? Yes. Can you hear me? Yes. <laughs> oh, great stuff. Well, I tried that trick the other radio guy uh, put through, and it seems to be working. Fantastic. Okay, so Skype people, anybody out there in Skype, if you look on the page, there should be an S. Is that what you saw, an S you click on, and that allows yes. you to connect Skype to Blog Talk? That's wow, correct. Thank- Goodness, I had no idea. Learning a lot tonight, the hard way. <laughs> me, me too. It's the first time I've used Skype. <laughs> All right. Okay. Alex, can you hear me? <laughs> Alex, can you hear Chuck? I can hear him perfectly. Okay, go for it, Chuck. We got we got it running out of time. Yes, uh, great stuff. Well, Alex, I'm glad to hear you're doing okay. Uh, Thank you, mate. I was still, still. Yeah, that's right. You too, mate. <laughs> um, <laughs> Um, it's pretty sad. I'm actually American-born, but well, that's another story. <laughs> um, oh, don't let that hold you back. <laughs> yeah, really. We won't hold it against you. <laughs> yeah, I've got a long long line of military people in the family, and I'm the last one, I think. I've long gone now. But, um, yeah, a lot of stuff's happening now. You certainly see in the news, uh, well, from my eyes, a lot of my friends sort of can't grasp much of it yet. I think the fear factor is there. Um, everything's moving I don't know really how to put it. Uh, well, first of all, disclosure. What do you feel disclosure? I mean, are they going to you know, help from our friends? Are they going to just pop in and do this, or is it only going to be gradual, person by person now? Or do you think there's going to be like a uh, a pinnacle move, like if they attack Iran, would they show themselves and say, knock it off? Or, you know, well, that, what that's, do you... a, that's, a, that's a fantastic question. You know, what does that scenario look like? And I honestly literally think anything can happen, but I'll tell you the scenario that I think is probably the most probable. Um, In my opinion, the scenario that's the most probable is that we have all kinds of activity out there because of the Internet and because of the access that people have to, to satellite data and telescope data. We know they're out there, and they're everywhere. Soho, what's around the sun, we know those are not anomalies, okay? What what my belief is is that the powers that be on the planet are really getting pressed into a very, very small space. And this is when they're the most dangerous, okay, is when they're wounded and backed into a corner. My opinion is is that the first group we meet, they're going to try to set us up. They're Mm -hmm. not going to be friendlies, Okay, they're going to be those that are here that are part of the rogue consortium, and they're going to introduce themselves and pretend to be the guys that are going to help us fix this. And it won't be long before we see through that horseshit. 
Mm-hmm. And then at that point, the benevolence will step in because humanity will clearly make a choice and we will not be in a space of fear in dealing with it. That will be taken away. And I find it interesting that everything has been sped up. And uh, that's the scenario that I think is going to happen. I think they're going to play the book of Revelations out because for 2,000 years or 1,000 years, we've all been millions of, billions of people on this planet have been creating that scenario, believing that's what was going to happen. So it would not be a stretch to buy in to this scenario that they're going to create for us. That's what I think is going to happen. Huh. Interesting. And Chuck was taken off the line. Not by me, Chuck, if you're listening. I don't know where you went. Uh, That's the nature of Skype. I think it's easily hacked by other forces. Uh, But I do appreciate the call, and I'm sure we'll be in touch. Bob, did I explain that clearly? Yes, yes, you did. I'm sorry. Yes, you did. I just, like I said, I watched him just disappear off the board. I don't (laughs) think... I didn't do that, I promise. I'm I know I still got training wheels on this silly thing. Um, I actually upgraded my equipment. I'm hoping the signal's better, but man, I'm I'm struggling tonight with some stuff. So sure. please, Chuck, please, that was a good question. Thank you. Yeah, I I think we're going to hear from Chuck again. Um, you can contact us uh, through UnicusMagazine.com, Chuck. Um, in fact, I think he has been contacting me. There's just like I said, it's overwhelmed with a lot of people. Eight, area code 805. Can you hear me? Hi. Uh, that's not a good sign. Damn. I, I swear, I swear that there are squirrels all over this place. Um, let's try this one, another Skype call. Hello, Reichmeister. Can you hear me? Good evening, Robert, uh, and uh, thank you for taking the call. My pleasure. Uh, my first question would be a follow-up of which Alex was already talking about. Mm-hmm. Uh, Duncan Ovinian was uh, last week on the radio show with Randy Maugans and he also talked about uh, the two groups and uh, how he works for the middle group, the Great Walkers and he said basically your soul is the most important thing uh, that you have more than any gold on earth mm-hmm. and uh, that is what you have to keep on, uh, hold on mm-hmm. while uh, the earth energies are changing uh, how would he, uh, he uh, relate that uh, in combination with the incoming object because it's an added energy also alongside with the added frequency uh, and since the earth is changing we as a human bodies we have to clear ourselves and raise our frequencies and how that interrelates uh... Alex did you hear that okay um, it was kind of breaking up on my end but I, I, I believe I caught the gist of it Yes. Um, I, I, I agree completely. Um, so I, I, I don't know about these something about objects coming oh, through. That, that yeah. part I did not get because yeah. it was so choppy. Yes. He was um, talking about like Nibiru or some dwarf star coming through that changing the frequencies that we need to be focused on our soul because it is going to be changing its frequency as well. Oh, I believe that our frequency is going to change before it gets here. Right. I do. I think we're well into the process of it. Right. Uh, which is why a lot of folks are kind of confused, and they're looking at the scenario, looking at the world, and they're pretty fed up. Mm-hmm. And, you know, they're really beginning to see, you know, through the mirage that's been created for us. And, and, and you know, and, and remember what Abraham Lincoln once said. <laughs> um, he always said, you know, trust the common people. They, they can always be trusted to make the right decision. True. And, and, you know, ultimately this is about us, the common people. Right. Um, You know, we're we're the legs everything else stands on. And Mm -hmm. we have gotten very little respect. And, uh, you know, that's going to change here real soon. Well, especially as we start to unite uh, our consciousness and our focus, our efforts on a more positive future, then um, we're going to see miracles occur. And I mean stuff that we can't even conceive of at this time, in my opinion. Um, yeah, some of the people calling in on Skype, you know, I, the reason I have to put you on hold quickly is because the, the signal is breaking up. I have no control over that. But I am trying to get through this as quickly as possible and, 
make sure everybody gets a chance to uh, speak tonight. Uh, this Skype caller, this is NAC2. Hello? Hello, how are you? Can you hear me? Yes. Oh, great. Oh, I didn't know if I was going to come on now. <laughs> yeah, I'm a big fan of uh, Mr. Coley here, and I've been uh, following him since his first YouTube video appeared uh, back in 2007. <clears throat> All right. And, uh, yeah, I was, uh, there's a popular theory on the computer um, about Nibiru, and uh, I was going to ask him if it's true. Uh, they say it's hiding behind the sun. Uh-huh. And uh, I've got one more question before I go on hold or something. Uh, what's the Andromedans take on 9-11? I never had, a, I never had that conversation with them about 9-11. Oh. They've been more focused on planetary issues um, and, and not so much a singular issue, although that is major because it did change, you know, much of the planet. Yep. To be honest with you, I've not, not had that conversation with them. Um, All right, no worries. But, but let's, let's go back to your first question. You know, our entire solar system is moving. It, 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 even though we are moving around our sun, the sun is also moving. Mm -hmm. Now, is it hiding, per se? No. It isn't hiding there. Um, it's entering our solar system um, at a certain angle, 15 degrees right ascension of Neptune's orbit. Uh, which at a particular one particular time could be behind the sun from us, um, but it isn't hiding. I mean, and it is coming. Mm. Um, I just uh, I just don't know the exact moment that we're going to see it, but we will know. There is no way they're going to be able to hide it. Right. Um, but we will be we will be pretty much awake when it comes through. We will. Mm. And. Um, you know, that's the plan. That's the plan. The plan is for us to be awake when this thing comes through. Right. And uh, the world powers, they're, they're freaking out because <laughs> we're, we're getting it. You know, we're getting it, and they did it themselves. They got yeah. too powerful, too greedy, too selfish, too maniacal, uh, too dastardly, and they, they're going to undo themselves. Mm-hmm. You know, and once that happens, they start feeding on each other, and and then the rats abandon ship. Mm. And once they start talking, it's game over. And it's coming, folks. It's coming. Right. So, but, you know, again, you got to work on your inside. You have sure. to work on the inside. Um, the internet. Not internet, but right. inner. I-N-N-E-R. you got to work on that. Right, um, and that's that's, that's what connects you. Right, and that's what connects you to the the thing I was describing before, the cosmic web, the true the true web are, that connects us all, and um, it ta it requires some effort, especially in this world and this time, because there's so many distractions. But this is why we had suggested before that you go someplace quietly and meditate. It's meaning you still your mind. You know, for me, I would say um it's probably one of the most difficult things to do but it's one of the most beneficial things that a person can do and whatever technique you use to to quiet the internal dialogue and really start listening and allow yourself to, to connect to the cosmos uh then that's that's what you need to do that's what you need to do as as often as possible nac 2 i'm sorry I had to put you on hold um but i'll tell you this much what i know about 911 and and the extraterrestrials is that there was um, allegedly an effort to begin a an ambassadorship program, according to Philip Kraft, uh, that that was uh, um, put on hold because of 9/11. And what he didn't know uh, was that um, the effort towards disclosure was moving forward in Washington D.C. in in that same time period, 2001. Around that time, there was very serious efforts for disclosure to occur. There was a lot of in, uh, di dialogue behind the scenes that was going on about how to proceed with disclosure. And, of course, it all came to a screeching halt um, in, in uh, September of 2011. However, what you should know and what I've documented in my work over six years investigating Washington, D.C., is that um, the next summer, July 16th specifically uh, of 2002, is when they landed on the Capitol building. And I know that sounds crazy to people when they first hear it, but if you go to my website at unicusmagazine.com and click on books, you'll see for yourself 
Look at the photographs. We have actual 35 millimeter film of a swarm of UFOs around the Capitol. One of them actually landed on the roof. And, um, you know, in Native American culture, that was called counting coup, where you actually touch your enemy. It was, it was a way of shaming them. And um, it's, you know, it was, as far as my understanding, the good ETs were saying, look, you can't stop us from coming down here. Uh, you know, if we really want to do it, we can do it. Now, we're giving you a time period to get your act together. And, of course, the bad guys are not listening. They're running off on their own little crazy tangent. And uh, it's to the detriment of all life on this world. And, uh, you know, as we know, that, that needs to, that really needs to be uh, stopped. Okay. Well, that, you know, that nonsense isn't going to go on much further. Right. Uh, you know, they everybody has a limit to what they're going to allow, right. and right. we're very close to that. And But I wanted to just touch on, you know, about going outside and getting centered. Mm -hmm. Folks, um, even if it's just a few minutes a day, like mm -hmm. a lunch break, a cigarette break, um, or if you actually have some time to just stand in the sun and mm -hmm. just look up at the sun Close your eyes and project yourself into the sun. Um, the sun is very, very important to me. And just project yourself into the sun and see yourself in the middle of it and just see how your body feels. And it doesn't take very long at all, literally just moments. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, it, it will help change your attitude quite a bit. Yeah, and it'll help activate your or reactivate the third eye, which your has been pineal, blinded. Yeah, your pineal gland. Your pine our pineal glands on this world have been so blinded, third eye blind is not just a, a phrase, it's an actual fact, that they, the dark side has done a very, very good job at blinding our, our inner or third eye uh, you, with the use of various chemicals. So standing, what I was told is, like Alex said, stand in the sunlight, allow it to penetrate, welcome it in, broadcast some of your light, exchange some of your light uh, internally with the sun, because it is a consciousness. It's, a, it's the most powerful direct link to the consciousness of the universe that we have in our immediate grasp in this dimension. Uh, area code 585, can you hear me? This is John. Can you guys hear me? Yes, please go ahead. Hey. Hey, Brother Alex and um, Brother Robert. Awesome. Um, first thing, thank God for YouTube and Alex Collier. <laughs> when I was waking up and I saw Alex Collier the first time, my mouth dropped. Um, the awesome job getting the information out there really helps. Hey, Alex, I'll make it quick because I'm sure there's other callers that want to get on there. Yeah. Uh, just read some today from Matthew's messages about right. soul con about soul contracts. Mm -hmm. So what he's saying is that uh, the Illuminati had soul contracts in here to be of the dark side, but at some point those soul contracts were supposed to switch to the light. Hmm. Any co any comment on that, Alex? Have you heard anything like that? No, well, not specifically put in those terms, um, but I did say earlier that, it's, you know, it's almost like they're now forcing us to move in this particular direction, um, and I don't know if it was the design or not, um, but, you know, I suppose that there is, some, there is a, a, prob a possibility or a probability that maybe some people came in to be assholes. <laughs> specifically, you know, maybe that was what they needed to experience to come in and just say, well, you know, I'm going to go to Earth and I'm going to be an asshole this lifetime. Uh, maybe that's true. I, I, Maybe that is true. I don't know. I mean, I suppose we have to be open to it, you know, but at what, what point do you say, okay, you know, the genes no longer fit. You're too much of an asshole. Right. You know, um, I don't know. So... <laughs> that, that's my take on it yeah I saw some of that information too and I was unable to fully I, I was kind of running out of time before the show so I'm going to go back to that uh, there's a lot of good information out there and anybody who wants to share it here on this forum it's this is an open forum uh, you know as long as you're coming from the heart uh, I'd love to hear from you and uh, the quickest way to contact me is to email at unicus at excuse me editor at unicusmagazine.com Area code 903, you're on the air. 903, can you hear me? Going once, yep. going twice. And you're out of there. Well, I tried. Okay. 
area code area code four one four. Can you hear me? Hello. Hi. You're on the air. Hi. Hi, Alex. Hi, Robert. I'm Hello. so honored to talk to both of you. Thank you. Hi. My name is Sai. I'm from Milwaukee. Um, I'm Hong Tu. And my people, we practice uh, shamanism uh, for healing as well. Um, unfortunately, I don't have that healing power. But about healthcare, um, Alex, you have a recommendation um, for our current healthcare that you find or you see that is beneficial to humans, and that maybe if I want to go into healthcare, maybe I can go into something like that. And number two, do you have a Facebook or personal website? Um, I don't. I don't have a personal website in um, in Facebook. Four hundred million dollars of Facebook's budget is funded by the CIA, <laughs> so I'm not on that. So the answer is no. I have enough trouble with those cats. Yeah. Um, so four one four. Let me just say this: the Andromedan people, though they are of a higher dimension, are human beings. Right. They use color, light, and sound to heal their bodies, as well as holographic technology to help regrow limbs, to regrow, regrow organs, things of that mm -hmm. nature. Mm -hmm. I know that there are technologies on Earth that are maybe not similar or exactly like that, but that are similar that have been suppressed. The reason they've been suppressed is because not only does it heal people quickly, um, but the medical community cannot charge an absolute fortune right. and mortgage your life to heal you. Mm -hmm. the, the, what, if you were going to do anything in that field, I would love to see you in, another, in, in a group be able to do something about getting those suppressed patents out to the people of the planet. Hmm. And that goes also for free energy. There are over 6,000 free energy patents that are being suppressed. And that's a fact. Yep. So it is. Uh, as far as what it is today, you know, the only suggestion I have is to try to keep your body alkaline. Mm -hmm. Alkaline, 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 because disease does not grow in an alkaline environment. Right. Yeah, liquid so minerals. Thing I can tell you, you know. Yeah. There's a few things that they absolutely help that. The quickest one, obviously, is uh, sea salt helps, but uh, there's a liquid mineral formula uh, that's, that's I, I take it every day. It really makes a difference. Let's see. Uh, 805, are you on the line now? Hello. Well, okay. Back up here. This is really very interesting to see. Area code four seven nine. Can you hear me? Yes. Hello. Hi, I'm I'm Natalie from Arkansas. Hi, Natalie. Hi. Thank you. Thank you both Hi. for all you do. Um, Welcome. Helping us to wake up. Um, my question for Alex has to do with the Patal. Um, mm -hmm. I'm very intrigued about that race ever since um, I first read about it. I'm wondering if there's anything further that he can tell us about it and how we might recognize their signature, um, if there are any individuals that he could name that um, in our history that were Patal and so forth. Thank you. Thanks, Natalie. Natalie, that, that, that's a great question, and I don't. I have told you all that I know that was shared with me. Um, I have not been shared uh, any type of signature, nor have I been uh, told of any one specific person, but let me just reiterate um, some uh, some particular points that they really, really stressed to me was that um, two particular points that some Patal fell back into the concept of time in order to help move things along. And in that, a, a significant number of souls, and I will tell you straight away, I am assuming that they are one and the same. And I have a reason for assuming that they're one and the same. That a particular group of souls have come back in time to earth to right the terrible wrong. Hmm. And it's going to work this time. 
Good. Whatever happened the last time, I guess it wasn't to everybody's satisfaction, so they're redoing it. Hmm. And I believe that it is, in fact, Patal that are doing this. Hmm. Now, it, is that particular soul group, all of us, some of us, uh, a group of us, I think at this point, with the bad guys so desperate, that, that identities are probably being shielded um, for obvious reasons. Right. Uh, because they're movers and shakers. They're, they're special forces on the soul, on the hmm. dimensional level. You know, uh, they come in and things happen. Um, that's my take on it, and I'm sticking to it. <laughs> you, you know, Alex, I can't believe how so, – I mean, I, should, I shouldn't say this, but it's really blowing my mind how many people are calling in tonight. Um, I think it's wonderful. Would, would, you, would you be available to do another show again yeah. some other time? Uh-huh. Yeah, because yeah, – and this time I promise I will not uh, have training wheels on the, uh, the system. <laughs> <laughs> it's ridiculous. <laughs> What I, I had to, I'm learning on the fly, okay, folks. I mean, I, I wasn't born an engineer. I, I think I can. I, I'm a fairly good host, but trying to juggle all this stuff, it, it, God, it's it's difficult. So anyway, area code nine seven two. Can you hear me? I can. Hello. Can you hear me? <laughs> yes, please. Quickly, I need a question or a comment or both. Okay, sure. I had listened to um, a show of Alex's, and he was talking about his galactic friends having, I guess. Alex, was it kind of like a supercomputer where they could monitor everyone's thoughts and they could kind of see what was in their hearts? Every craft has that. Every single craft has that, that device. Wow. Yes. So, what they do is they read, they read your chains of thoughts. Really? Uh-huh. So, I mean, what, what does that give them? I mean, does it just give them a percentage of people who are enlightened on Earth or... What is the true purpose for it? Uh, for, to actually read intentions are those particular races that are not telepathic. Mm. That device well, is specifically used on four races that are not telepathic. Because when you are telepathic um, and you're talking to someone else who's telepathic, there are no secrets. Right. right. There just aren't any secrets. You either avoid telepathic communication so they can't read you, or if you do have a conversation, they see you. And, well, there is no hiding. Yeah, it's not yeah, just well, seeing, it's a feeling. It's a feeling and there's an exchange of emotions as well as information and, and even visualization, I believe, is, is shared, like a television. It's, it's like a snapshot of the entire holograph that is you. Yes, okay. Okay. Well, when you're talking now, to, when you're like talking to your guardians or your angels, are you really talking to galactics? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, is that a stupid question? <laughs> no, no, because no, not at all. That's that's the big that's the big sixty four million dollar question that the that's church, always, the church that's doesn't want to answer. That. That's the way I've always felt. Is that of course? I mean, I kind of had somebody out there. I, I know I've had people watch. I mean, well, whoever watching over me. Yeah, right. And, but I didn't feel like it was somebody on a fluffy cloud playing a harp. No. No, 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 no. That's that's an abstraction for the period of time that we were living in. Also, it's a corruption of what really is. But our relationship to them, you know, in the Catholic Church, the communion, the Eucharist, uh, it, that that has been taken far afield of what it was originally intended to be, which was a, a, a way to communicate with our um, extraterrestrial family. Ah. And it's so that is something that I encourage people to do. Not may, maybe not through taking communion per se, unless they understand that that's the whole concept. Commune in means to communicate with these higher entities, and like I said, the main thing is to realize that we are connected to them. We're all family, so right. uh, you know that that's something that again I believe will evolve in time. Our understanding, it, my understanding of it, is it has evolved tremendously. I'm I'm not a Catholic, but I. I did uh, a version of Ave Maria with in English, uh, with, that with a message that had been channeled to me uh, when I asked, you know, what was what is this all about, you know, what what does this mean? And boy, right. I, I was boy was I shocked. Was I ever shocked? It was the someone in a higher dimension was saying to me, um, bringing a scenario together. Okay, the Annunciation was, uh, we're bringing one of our own to your world to assist you, and that our love for you is never ending 
you know, and that blew me away. I mean, emotionally, it gives me just, it, 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 I, I feel like my heart's going to break because not out of sadness either. It's just amazing that they still love us so unconditionally considering, <laughs> you know, how, how just wicked we can be at times. And I think the reason they, they still feel that way about us is because they know, they know we've been manipulated into being like this. It's not our true nature. This is, this well, is I, all, go ahead. The, well, the other, and just one more part and I'll, I'll, okay. Sorry. Let's talk to you. But, ahead. um, through meditation, if you really put out there that you really want to have a connection, mm -hmm. um, will they eventually get around to it, or of course, um, is it just not, you know, really possible? Or can they see in your heart that you really truly want to make a connection? Yes, I believe they do. They absolutely. absolutely do. Yes, absolutely. Yep. That's what I'm trying to yep. explain to you, caller. Is that the I'm going to put you on hold. Thanks. Is that uh, they they feel what we feel, it's kind of painful for them because I, I don't, you know, my understanding is that they don't have to deal with all the crap that we have down here unless they start tuning into us. And then they, they're basically receiving everything that we're feeling. And that could be quite overwhelming for them. So I think they have to be on guard when they do have contact with this because it isn't just a, a, like an intellectual inter exercise. It's what Alex is talking about and what I mentioned too. When you have telepathic conversations or communication, it's really deep. I mean, there isn't any secrets, and you can actually feel what the other person is feeling. It's not that not that nonsense about, you know, oh, I feel your pain. No, they really feel your pain. And, that, of course, it's not like they want to feel it, but when you're having that level of communication, you can't help it. So, oh, Okay, well, let, let me, let me just forward. interject something here. You, Please do. You made a comment about them feeling really protected and guarded. Mm -hmm. um, it, is, it is not it, – it, it, it is, but – What's amazing about us as a species mm. is our extremes of emotions. <laughs> yeah. Okay? Most of these particular races are even the regressives. Mm -hmm. They're very calm. Mm -hmm. They don't experience the extremes that we do. Mm -hmm. Okay? And they simply do not know how to process that much emotion so quickly. Oh, uh -huh. okay. That's what it is. I mean... We go through emotions from from anger to love to to joy to bliss to confusion to fear every day pretty quickly. You know, we can have all those emotions in two hours. Uh, or less, yeah. Okay, where they may not experience any of those to the extreme we do ever in their lifetime. Right. Unless they're in front of us or communicating with us in some way. And you remember the, the story, Bob, where I was on the mothership, and I walked on, and we walked into a park area, and the children moved away from me, <laughs> you know, and it was because I was completely overwhelmed, and it was because they were feeling my emotion. Right. They, did, they didn't understand it, they didn't recognize it, and they moved away. Sure. You know, um, and also, you know, Maureen had said that we've been teaching them about your race. And they knew about our extremes, you know, mm -hmm. uh, our generosity, our love, our anger, our war, our cruelty, they knew mm -hmm. all of it, but they themselves never experienced any of that. Right. Except maybe love and joy, you know. Mm -hmm. So um, I, I just I wanted to clarify that for the audience. Yeah, thank Let's you. Get another caller. Okay. So, well, I, I, we're really up against the clock here, folks. For those of you who I haven't gotten to, please understand that I want to get to everybody and uh, I'll let you know next time we're having a show with Alex I'd like you to try and call back Harry code 718 Can you hey, how you doing buddy uh, this is uh, Vince calling from New York hi Vince how are hey, you Rob, you really blew me away with that Ave Maria thing bro. that was awesome <laughs> <laughs> oh, thanks so much man. I'd love to hear that thank you okay you're welcome um, my question is this um, there's two stars there's a brown star a brown dwarf coming in um, to our solar system they're speaking of on the Andrama Andromeda Council dot com. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you spoke. I've heard of that. Sure. But, um, what I'm what I'm uh, re interjecting here is this: is this star that's coming in? Is this related to the blue star Kachina, uh, the Hopi Indian prophecy? Is that possible? I don't know. Can we? Because it's no. I, I I don't believe they're actually related. Um, but I don't have a very specific or clear answer about exactly what the blue star Kachina is okay. or where it's coming from. 
but I will do my best to see if there's any way I can find out. Okay, because yeah, they're saying okay. that there's – yep, I appreciate that. And the other question is, if, if you don't mind, um, can we interject uh, – can we go over the, the, the deep underground military bases quick? Are they actually uh, – Get rid of the uh, Drax and the Greys out of the uh, these bases. They want to, but they they don't have the ability. Uh, an extra element has to be included in order to make that possible. And what is that? Uh, Can you say? Uh, intervention, uh-huh. specific intervention of other groups okay. that can deal with them. Uh huh. Um, who have dealt with them at other places off world. Right. Um, like special forces teams, mm-hmm. um, it's going to happen. It's going to happen. Okay. That's all I can tell you is it's going to happen. All right. Okay. But there has to be some education, and our particular governments on this planet um, have not been very good at keeping their word. <laughs> yeah, that's an understatement. 